Hi dear cricket fans, subscribers and friends for cricket happenings. This is your host Ram welcoming you to your daily edition of cricket happenings. Well, as far as cricket happenings goes, uh, we saw well, first I'm going to take you to the lowest ever total uh, by a team in World Cup history and that belonged to Bangladesh. Bangladesh were bundled out by the West Indies for just 58 runs and that 58 runs were knocked off by West Indies in just 12.2 overs. So Bangladesh put up an insipid display of batsmanship here and this has come as a real shock because when I got up in the morning and I saw that Bangladesh had been bundled out it was a, it came as a real shock for me. Well and I'm sure one were really looking out for this very key clash because it was very essential for Bangladesh to actually win this match but well West Indies are doing well they've got four points and as far as the other match were concerned uh, again, uh, there were comprehensive wins. One was for uh, for Bangladesh, West Indies over Bangladesh, and the other one was New Zealand. It was another comprehensive win, whereas Zimbabwe were just uh, uh, they, they, Zimbabwe could muster only 162 after batting first after winning the toss, and New Zealand uh, actually wiped off the target with their best chase uh, as as far as openers are concerned uh, in uh, for New Zealand, making a record there 166 for no loss with Martin Guptill and Brendan McCullum. Um, just taking them past their target in the 34th over. Well, uh, just to look at uh, the uh, match between, uh, first let us look at the match between uh, West Indies and Bangladesh, uh, which is the one, as I said, Bangladesh were bowled out for their, in fact, Bangladesh skipper won the toss and elected to bat, and they were bowled out for the lowest ever total in one day internationals. They were all out for just 58 runs. It was absolute schoolboy cricket. But let me give credit to Kemar Roche, who started off everything by actually dismissing the danger man with the third ball of the day when Tommy Mikbal got a beautiful outswinger from Kemar Roche. And that's it. He nicked it to Sammy. Sammy accepted it gleefully. And Tommy Mikbal was walking for a duck of three balls. Emerald Case was uh, caught by Thomas. Uh, chipped in a catch of the bowling of Sami for five and that was uh, 16 for two for Bangladesh. Junaid Siddiq was the only one who offered any resistance there scoring 25 of 27 balls with four fours. Another Roshan swinger uh, prodding onto his pads and Junaid Siddiq was gone out for 25. Uh, there was no resistance whatsoever from the other batsmen. Mushfiqur Rahim was a real out like a rabbit I would say uh, to the bowling of Sami for a duck. Shakib Ul Hassan disappointed, clean ball by Suleiman Ben, and Rakib Ul Hassan was a victim of Sami for four. The the worst thing that uh, the thing that one would have expected Mohammad Ashraful to take, uh, you know, with an experience that he has, probably he could have, uh, you know, um, really done well. But he contributed 11 runs. Too much. Um, um, sorry, it was uh, Kemar Roche once again coming there into the equation as Mohammad Ashraful was also gone. Caught Thomas Bowl Roche for 11. And that's it. After that, Suleiman Ben wrapped it up. Alp Naeem Islam was gone. Caught Thomas Bowl Ben for one. Shafil Islam was caught. Polard Bowl Ben. Duck. Abdul Razak was not out on. Rubel Asal was clean bowled by Ben. It was all wrapped up. But let me tell you, Kemar Roche, the man of the match, was the man who did the trick for. Uh, uh, for West Indies because he actually dismissed the danger man Tamim Mikbal. He took the person who was batting well that was Junaid Siddi who made 25 and then also dismissed the uh, person who could have been dangerous Mohamed Ashraful and Kemar Roche figure 6 overs no made and 19 runs and 3 wickets and Kemar Roche is really the toast of West Indies as far as this match is concerned and even as the series goes Kemar Roche already taken a hat-trick looking very very good for West Indies. Suleiman Ben 5.5 overs 2 maidens 18 runs and 4 wickets there was some real uh, uh, bite in the pitch, there was some bounce, there was some turn. Suleiman Ben with his height really, really exploited uh, the uh, the conditions there. 5.5 overs, 2 made in 18 runs and 4 wickets. And Darren Sami, the captain, came into the uh, mix here today. 7 overs, no made in 3 for 21. So that was as far as this match was concerned. After that, West Indies actually wiped off the target in double quick time there. 59 runs were scored at 4.78 runs and over. The only wicket to fall was Davon Smith was clean balled by a very good ball from Naim Islam which turned and he was clean bowled for 6 of 12 balls with 1-4. Chris Gale remained not out on 37 of 36 balls with 6-4s. 
Uh, Darren Bravo is not out on 9 of 26 balls with 1 4, 59 for 1. West Indies going past the target in 12.2 overs. The bowling figures, nothing to really talk about. Shafiul Islam's 2 overs went for 11. Naeem Islam was impressive, 6 overs, 1 made and 1 for 14. Ruberson, 1 over for 12 runs. Abdul Razak, 1 over, none, no, none for 8. Mohamed Ashraful, 2 overs for 11. Shakib Hassan bowled 2 balls for 1 run. Kemar Rose was man of the match, and as I said, it was a rank bad batting display from the Bangladeshi batsmen. A total failure as far as Bangladesh is concerned. This is not what the crowd would have expected. The crowds were going when they would have been uh, really looking forward to it and they got the shock I would say here at the Shere Bangla National Stadium Mirpur. Really full sorry for Bangladesh but West Indies did their job. Kemar Roche was um, uh, absolutely top stuff from Kemar Roche there. Suleiman Ben uh, turning the ball very well uh, and getting the wickets and Darren Sami also joining them. So it's all over for Bangladesh here. Now, uh, Bangladesh might have a tif stiff task now uh, to actually, if at all they want to qualify for the quarterfinals. And they have not done themselves any good by playing in this manner. Well, now I take you down to the next match, uh, which was again a piece of cake for New Zealand. Basically, New Zealand cantering home by 10 wickets. They won this match by 10 wickets at their Sardar Patel Stadium in Motera. Zimbabwe were the ones who won the toss and they made 162. The only person who played well there, for, in fact, they had a horror start there as Chris Coventry, going for a non-existent run, was run out beautifully by Bennett who dived full, full length and actually uh, took down the stamps. So Chris Coventry was gone for a duck. After that, uh, Taibu was LBW bowl, Tim Saudi for eight. Uh, and that's it. And the Zimbabwe innings were just uh, plunging uh, deeper and deeper into the mire there. As Craig Irvine contributed 11 runs of 25 balls, two fours, was a victim of Mills. Uh, and uh, that was uh, Chigumbra, uh, the spinners, uh, uh, Daniel Vettori came in and wheeled his arm over. Chigumbra was gone. LBW, beautiful ball bowled by Vettori. It had uh, the captain of Zimbabwe, LBW, for one. Chakabwa was dismissed um, uh, absolutely uh, just, uh, just one ball later. He was dismissed. Caught Taylor bowled Vettori for a duck. And the only person who actually, the only person who played well was Brendan Taylor, who was standing there like a rock, but he saw seeing all the wickets fall. He got some support, I would say, uh, from uh, Prosper Utsaya, who came in and actually uh, combined into a stand of uh, 40 runs. Uh, but well, that was all over. So Taylor Stiles actually had him LBW for 44, 57 balls with four fours. And then there were some contributions coming from Greg Lamb, who was run off 18 of 34 balls with 1-4. Prosper Utsaya made 36 of 65 balls with 3-4s. And um, Graham Creamer, 22 of 43 balls with 1-4. And, and that's it. And 162 all out for Zimbabwe. Kyle Mills, 10 overs, no made in 2 for 29. Tim Saudi, 9.2 overs, no made in 3 for 29. Bold well. Hamish Bennett, 8 overs for 30, 37. Daniel Torrey, 10 overs, no made in 2 for 25. Was impressive. Scott Stiles, bold 4 overs, no made in 1 for 13. 3 overs for 15 for Nathan McClellan, the Red Arm off spinner. Jesse Ryder, bold 2 overs for 10 runs. As far as New Zealand were concerned, absolutely, as I said, they went, uh, they won in a canter with Martin Guptill and Brendan McClellan stroking a lot of boundaries and also Martin Guptill hitting uh, Tanyashe Panyangara who actually uh, played in this match and uh, he was very very costly 5.3 overs cost him 42 runs as a pace bowler has given an opportunity here in the World Cup uh, he really wasted it as Martin Guptill went after him clouted him for two straight sixes and Martin Guptill was not out on 86 of 108 balls 7 fours and two sixes for him he was named one of the match for his uh, brilliant stroke play. Brendan McCallum was not out on 76 of 95 balls, 6 fours and 2 six. Absolutely easy uh, piece of cake for uh, New Zealand as they uh, ran over Zimbabwe. 166 for no loss, a 10 wicket victory for them, which will do them a world of good. As far as the bowling figures were concerned for Zimbabwe, Panyangara, 5.3 was numbered in none for 42. 7 hours, 23 runs uh, for Roy Price was uh, very impressive. Prosper Utsaya bowled 6 hours for 23. Greg Lamb, 5 hours, no made in none for 18. Creamer 7 overs now made a none for 38 there and Chigumbra bowled 3 overs now made a none for 21. Well, uh, before the match we thought it was going to be a battle between the uh, Zimbabwean spinners uh, and the New Zealand uh, batsmen but it was not to be. Uh, but if you see the score that the, bats the, the Zimbabwe batsmen didn't do themselves any credit at the top of the order uh, barring uh, Brendan Taylor. Other than that, Coventry, Taibu, Irvine, Chigumbra, Chakabwa, everybody fell. But the lower order really contributed. Like the spinners, I would say. Greg Lamb, 18. Prosper Tsuya, 36. Graham Creamer, 22. Raymond Price, 11. But, well, what, what you wanted is from 
the batting from the top order which really didn't come off and as far as the bowling was concerned uh, the spin definitely did well in fact i would say prize sayalam but uh, defending a very low score of 162 it was very difficult for the zimbabwean spinners uh, to make inroads there and uh, well uh, definitely the uh, batsmen would have been very confident uh, saying the seeing the score of 162 and uh, this was uh, very good batting from new zealand but i thought uh, the spinners bowled well but i really feel sorry for them because the batsmen of zimbabwe couldn't set them up a total but for new zealand as i said uh, they would be very happy they would be very happy to go with this 166 for no loss a comprehensive victory over Zimbabwe there. Uh, let me see, dear cricket fans, let me see what are the other fixtures. Well, tomorrow is a key clash. Keep an eye on cricket happenings. I'll be back with this very, very important match which is going to be played between Sri Lanka and Australia. And Australia, for the first time, are going to play a major opponent in this World Cup. Yes, New Zealand, they definitely won. It was very easy for them. But Sri Lanka are real competitors. And this is going to be a real key clash tomorrow which is going to happen. So keep an eye on that. So I'm returning you back uh, to the studios here. Uh, I, I have done my bit here. As I said, comprehensive victories for um, uh, New Zealand, a 10-wicket victory, and Bangladesh out for the lowest total uh, in World Cup history, and also the lowest total in one-day internationals of Bangladesh in their uh, tenure uh, as, a, as a member nation. Unfortunately, that was so. And uh, well, that's it, dear cricket fans subscribers and friends for cricket happenings this is your host ram signing off thank you